It's hard to write code for retries and failures in distributed systems. But Mete, you told me the other day that you have a solution for this. Yes, workflows can help. Let me show you how. Imagine you're building an e-commerce application. You need to receive orders and make sure customers have enough credit before you process the order. You could have two microservices. Order service receives a request and creates a pending order. Customer service tries to reserve the credit. And if it's successful, order service approves a pending order. So the order service would call the customer service? Yes, you could have services calling each other directly, but I don't recommend it. Direct calls create unnecessary coupling between services. For example, if you need to change customer service, you need to think about if order service needs to change as well. Makes sense. And how can we avoid that coupling? You can use a service orchestrator to define which service needs to be called in what order and let the orchestrator make those calls. That way, services don't know about each other and they don't call each other directly. Google Cloud has workflows for service orchestration. Sounds like that would mean less code for me to write. And I like that because I know that any code I write will contain bugs and I will have to maintain it in the future. Uh, but how do I tell workflows what to do and in what order? Let's take a look at the YAML file that defines orchestration. Here, we have the assign step where we initialize the URLs we want to call. We are calling the always works endpoint in customer service. It's an endpoint that never fails. In this step, we call the order service to create a pending order. In the next step, we call the customer service to reserve the credit. In the final step, we call the order service again to approve the order. Got it. And what would happen if we run this? Let's run it. Here I am in the workflow. Let's hit execute. And as expected, it works. And it will always work because we are calling the endpoint that never fails, which never happens in real life. <laughs> right. And speaking of real life, if the call to reserve credit fails, the whole workflow stops? Yeah, unfortunately, yes. In our first implementation of the orchestration, if any of the steps fail, then the whole orchestration fails. And we may not want that, right? Definitely not. We need to think about how to handle failures, and that depends on the nature of the failure. For example, let's say the reserve credit endpoint in customer service is flaky. It fails once in a while due to some transient error. Right, right. There could be network errors, for example. Uh, how would we handle that? One easy way of handling transient errors is to apply a retry policy. Instead of calling an endpoint once, you can retry two or three times if it fails. Aha! And what would the YAML look like for that? Let me show you the second version. We're calling the sometimes works endpoint now. This endpoint throws errors once in a while. Here, we wrap the HTTP call with the default retry policy. I see. And what happens if we run that? Let's run it and see what happens. As you see, the workflow is successful, even though we were calling the sometimes works endpoint that can fail once in a while. And this takes care of transient errors, like if the customer service is down temporarily. Uh, but what if the customer has no credit, so reserve credit always fails? Right. That is certainly possible, and we need to handle that differently, as that's more of a permanent error. If the customer has no credit, uh, retries won't help. That's when the saga pattern can come into play. Ah, saga pattern. I've heard and read about that term before. Uh, and it has something to do with compensation steps, right, Meta? Yes. Uh, the idea is when a service call fails, you need to decide if you need to take a compensation step to undo a previous call. In this case, order service creates the pending order. If the customer service cannot reserve credit, the pending order needs to be canceled. That's the compensation step. On the other hand, if the customer service reserve credit call is successful, you go ahead and approve the order. And the workflow would still retry the reserve credit call if there are transient errors, uh, like before? That's right. Let's take a look at the YAML. Now we have an accept block. In that block, 
we check for non-recoverable errors and then go to reject pending order to cancel the order. That's our compensation step. And what does it look like when we run this? Let's run it. It executes successfully and it will continue to execute because it recovers from transient errors and it compensates for non-recoverable errors. And you call this the Saga pattern? Yes, the Saga pattern is often used in distributed systems where you cannot use database transactions. You start with assuming things will work well. If they don't, you compensate in later steps by undoing what you did before. It's eventually consistent. I like that approach to life. <laughs> we assume things will work. Uh, we define the workflow declaratively instead of in imperative code. And we compensate if things go wrong. Thanks for showing us, Mete. Thanks for having me. It was fun. And thank you, everyone, for watching. If you have any questions for Mete about declarative workflows or the Saga pattern, leave them in the comments. And let me know in the comments if you have suggestions for other serverless topics I should bring up in the future. I read every single comment. Until next time.